Here's an interesting one today. We're getting Copilot for free. That's right. Recently, people are getting emails in order to try GitHub Copilot, and now they have a free tier. So today we're going to be going through quite a few things, including setting this up for Visual Studio Code, showing off some of the features, and talking about the privacy implications that come with using the Copilot to write your code. I'll even show you how to opt out of the data collection. But in order to set up Copilot on Visual Studio Code, especially with enabling the free tier, it does require you to have a GitHub account. After all, Copilot runs with GitHub, so we're going to have to make a few changes in our account in order to get this working. I'm going to be posting links in the description below so you can check them out and have an even more in-depth look at how to set things up just in case you run into issues. There are some good documentation for this. Now, you might be asking yourself, why in the world would Microsoft and GitHub release this new free tier? Are they not making enough money already? Do they need more people? Well, we'll dive into that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do with Visual Studio Code downloaded, you're going to need a few extensions. And I have used GitHub Copilot before, including the actual paid version, the pro version. Overall, it's pretty good. They've gotten a lot better over the last few months. But what really has changed is whether or not you choose Copilot versus using a different model, such as Claude Sonnet 3.5 which is fantastic because Claude has been known to be much better than any other model out there, at least for code development, which clearly Visual Studio Code must have been struggling to keep developers. So in this fresh environment here, up top, you'll notice use AI features with Copilot free. If you click on this, you will be required to sign in to use Copilot free. You'll also have to enable it. We're going to do that real quick. And it says that they now offer this Copilot free, but what are the limitations? It says with GitHub Copilot free, you get 2000 code completions per month. That's 80 per working day, which they claim is a lot. I don't know about that, but you also get 50 chat requests per month. This is the thing that you probably will use even more in order to communicate back and forth with the chat bot in order to actually use the machine learning model. You get access to GPT 4.0 and the Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Once you hit this, you have to go to the paid pro plan. Clearly a lot of updates here that they're making. But one important thing that you'll see here below, do not miss this. Copilot Free and Pro may show public code suggestions and we may use your data to, for product improvement. You can change these settings. So under your personal account, under the Copilot subsection, you'll get access to the section where you can activate your Copilot Free for the account or upgrade to Pro. This is actually a requirement. And what I want to show you is that you'll have to hit the Start Using Copilot Free button under the Co pilot github section go hit copilot under settings and then you'll have access to start using copilot free on the first click it's going to take you to the actual chat bot which is gpt 4.0 but that's not what we want we can exit out of here because this helps enable it for visual studio code as well in order to use this we need to be able to sign in and enable those things so i'm going to click the sign in to use and then if you're already signed in it's going to recognize you you can just hit continue so you can sync the accounts together and then you're going to hit open in visual studio code it's going to say getting ready to set up copilot and it's going to take a few moments until you see the chat bot over there on the right hand side now if you don't see this chat deal up here there's probably extensions missing go over to the extensions just type in copilot and search you'll notice that these two are currently installed on my computer now, I can't remember whether I installed this at some point and it's just cached up or if it comes default now, but regardless, just install one of them. It'll actually install both once you install one, but you're looking for this directly from GitHub called GitHub Copilot. You just hit the install button and then you'll get this chatbot as well. If you don't have access to it up here at the top, you'll have access to it here at the bottom right. We're getting very close in order to be using GitHub Copilot. And if you love breakdowns like this, make sure to hit that like button for me. Also, think about subscribing below because you wouldn't want to miss another video like this. I'm going to go over, I'm actually going to create a new file and then we're going to start using it here in a moment. But let's take a moment and talk about why in the world they would be offering this free tier all of a sudden. It's probably just another play to get more people to use their product, including their data. Well, first off, if you end up using Copilot and you kind of get used to it, well, more than likely you're gonna be purchasing a subscription. As GitHub just got done announcing 150 million developers, it's kind of funny that they came out at the same time because at the very least, they're gonna gather more data and harvest code for retraining this AI, trying to make it better. After all, data is the new currency here. This is more than likely why they made this 
switch. It wasn't just because they were feeling generous in order to give us this option. Instead, I personally believe it was just a matter of time that they didn't have enough people who they were charging and now this is a way to win from both sides of things. We're gonna get into their privacy statement and how they're collecting data soon and how to turn that off, but let's use Copilot for a moment. So the idea here is maybe I can write a Python script that can write to different types of databases. I'm not that great at SQL statements, so let's just give this a shot and see what kind of boilerplate code this can produce for us. And since I've done it before, I can review it. If you ever create a new project, you're gonna have to hit, yes, I trust the authors. There's no code in here, so there's nothing malicious. But I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna call it db.py script. And you'll notice that there is no GitHub currently, but there automatically is this control I that we can press in order to ask GitHub Copilot to do something. This, I believe, is what they're talking about with the 80 per day limitation, but we'll go into chat and show that off as well here in a moment. I'm first going to write, write some Python code that can access different types of databases, including Postgres, MSSQL, MySQL, and let's even do SQLite to throw a curveball in there. Let's see if it's capable of doing this in this one liner. And you can see here that it is actually writing things out. And everything's in green because this just means there's no changes. And it even gives us an example usage. So let me just go look through here real quick just to make sure that it actually included things. One thing you'll notice is you have to hit the accept button in order to take these changes on. You can ask the copilot to redo things as well. I love this new feature that they've done. Of course, they've pretty much taken this from other code editors like Cursor, but they've come a long way since the initial inception of GitHub Copilot. Anyways, I'm gonna hit accept to take these changes on and don't forget you just hit control I in order to use that over again. Okay, so it did do a connect. There is no SQL statement in here and it did import some of the correct libraries up top. Okay, we have a connect Postgres, connect MSSQL, connect MySQL and connect SQLite. We have to pass in the host name, database, user and password. I don't see a table name here which is something that might be missed if we wanted to connect, let's say, to a specific table, but I guess I didn't specify that as well. That could be my next fix here, which is I'm just gonna do control I and ask GitHub Copilot something. But notice that I have this password highlighted and the line is actually going to the password. I don't want that. Instead, if I do control A, now I can work on the entire code. I press control I, just to mention in order to correct portions or the entire code. So I'm gonna say, I want to be able to create a new table in the database if one doesn't already exist. Please implement this and create specific queries based on whatever database you are connecting to. Because depending on which database is being connected to, for example, MSSQL is going to be different from how you query and create a Postgres SQL database, they just have different function functions. Um, the other thing too, is it does create a database file. It recognized that this is not something you log into, that you would just create a file on the system for SQLite, fantastic. Now that I hit this, we're gonna see whether or not it's capable of doing this. If not, we'll go back and use the chat, but it looks like it's actually updating things just fine. And it gives again, example usage at the end. Overall, looks good. Now we have a create table function that expects a connection parameter, a database type, so we can choose which SQL statement to use and what columns to add, which we can work on our structure later. We can hit accept or rerun, including discard, which will just throw this away. I'm gonna hit accept and that looks good. And then just go through. So we take the cursor, AKA the connection of the database we're pointing to. We look at which DB type that we're passing in, which we could probably just get it from the connection information, whatever just a small thing. Then we're gonna make a query and the string here is that we create table if not exists. Notice how that's different from MSSQL where they do if not exists first. The Postgres and MySQL are similar, which I would have expected. And then for the SQL Lite, it's similar as well. MSSQL, of course, Microsoft has to be more difficult with how they use their SQL queries, but no big deal, everything looks good. So you can now see how writing code with GitHub Copilot works. I'm also gonna use the chat here in a moment, just so you get an understanding of how to use this as well. Now, we only have 50 prompts on this Ask Copilot, and if we go and check out Microsoft's privacy statement, let's now talk about the personal data that they collect in order to train these AI models. So just going through here, things like direct interactions, including 
prompts, inputs, content that you share with the AI can all be collected and trained on. Also, any communication services that are used through the Visual Studio Code app seems like that's fair game, documents, files, and they also collect usage data. So not only how you're using the AI, but they can also get usage patterns, prompt history, outputs, and results generated from the AI, and not to mention all the telemetry on top of that just for Visual Studio Code, including telemetry data. This is all great information for Microsoft to be able to train on. That's why if you go to your settings on GitHub, this is a very important thing. You hit settings, go down to Copilot, and let's make sure that we disable those options. You'll notice Copilot in GitHub is enabled currently. Suggestions matching public code duplication detection filter is allowed right now. Okay, if you don't want code suggestions being made from public code, you can actually block that so it doesn't show any. Then the next thing is allow GitHub to use my code snippets from the code editor for product improvements. Well, that feature is getting turned off. That way we disable it from using the code that we actually create from the AI. If you wanna give Claude 3.5 Sana a try, you can enable it from here as well. And then one note that they make is it can take 30 minutes for changes to go into effect. Restart your code editor to make these changes. And then we're also bound by the general privacy statement for GitHub. Again, very similar things like user provided data. Seems like they can collect code, inputs, text, other contexts that you create, including repositories, pull requests, comments, feedback data that you may provide, which includes features like GitHub Copilot and code spaces. The wildest part is there's a potential to even give private repository data. There's a lot that can be shared here. So make sure that you go through your privacy settings, although it's buried in multiple different places. Like here, if you want to opt out, you could go to file preferences settings at the top left of VS code opting out will sync across all future web sessions in GitHub code spaces. Finally, to finish up things, I'm going to now ask Copilot some questions in the chat. So the code completion tool is great if you want things to be programmed for you, but it's not great for explaining contexts as it's only really meant to write code. So what the chat bot is good for is asking questions. Notice that you can attach context if you want, including the code base, the editor, so on and so forth. Since we're looking at a file, it's automatically saying, oh, here's a context called db.py. Look at that. And then you can also add an extension if you want, or even start a voice chat. It's currently using GPT 4.0. This is where you can change it to Claude 3.5 Sonnet, the preview version as well. But I'm just going to say, please include some unit tests for my code. That way I can test if I can connect to the databases. Let's see what it can come up with. It says, confirm your Python testing framework to enable discovery. Sure, I'm just gonna use PyTest in the root directory is fine. And notice it's actually running some code here at the bottom, it opened up a terminal. So this isn't necessarily what I wanted. I wanted to actually write the code. It looks like it tried to test it. Instead, all it did is just run PyTest for me, which is not what I wanted. So I'm just gonna rephrase things and see if it's going to actually create something useful this time. And sure enough, this time I did get some code. I can now take this and hit apply edits, which should create a brand new file and it does. And it allows me to use unit test in order to try and connect to various different databases. Fantastic, that seems to work. Now we can ask questions about this code if we wanted to, for example, we can just say, hey, what does this unit test file do? And how do I execute it to run in order to test my db.py script? And now it gives us a brief explanation of how it connects to the database using the functions in our DB script and how unit tests can use a framework in order to mock up the database connections so we don't have to make actual connections and just make sure it comes back successful when it does connect and how to actually use it to test things. Very good. We can even run this into the terminal and then press enter to see if it runs. And sure enough, it did run, but it did not find a module called test DB. Anyways, I'm not going into how to fix this right now. I'm just showing you the use cases here and, and how GitHub free works. So that's it. We've really broken down the GitHub Copilot preview free tier. Is it any good? I mean, I've used the pro edition before and it is pretty good if you want to write some basic code and get some answers on what already exists. That's all great. Just know that it can be trained on and I think it'd be silly to think that they aren't, especially if you haven't opted out. I still don't get why they call everything Copilot including GitHub Copilot and the regular Copilot that they throw on Windows PCs. That's still confusing. 
even though it does very separate things like code editing versus just regular context prompt answers, but no big deal there. Would you use something like this? Are you interested in the free edition of, of the GitHub Copilot feature? Let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't already, smash that like button. You've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much. Also subscribe below. You clearly like videos like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.